back at it. A local friend of mine was kind enough to give me a starter motor off of an M50, so this should work no matter what. Um, unfortunately, it looks like that M40 starter is not the right thread pitch, so... Oh, fun, fun. Luckily, none of the top end stuff is very difficult to remove on this, especially because not any of it's really tightened down yet. <laughs> so that's definitely a help. Um, that's first order of business. Once the starter is changed out, um, I do still have to figure out exactly what's going on electronics wise up here. Uh, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is just cutting the X20 off of this M50 harness. The harness is already cut anyway. So I'm really not going to lose sleep over it. And what I'm going to do just to diagnose is probably strip back a couple of the wires and just feed them manually into the chassis side C101. And if that doesn't work, then I know I've got issues inside of the car, but I'm not really going to start there because this car drove in under its M40. Also, sorry, last video I called that an M10 a couple times. It's not. It's an M40. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure the electronics inside the car are just fine. So, starter motor first, mess with the plugs second, and then if by some miracle the car runs, then lots of stuff. I gotta tighten down the exhaust manifold, start fabbing up the downpipe. Let's see what else. There's no coolant in it yet, so I still have to do stuff like that. Um, whole whole bunch of stuff, but not counting the chickens yet. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this starter. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but we'll see. Well, luckily for the time being, the intake manifold removal is still a five minute job. <laughs> Everything's kinda in the right spot still, so that's good. Um, there's the bum starter, and by bum, I mean just not quite the right thing, so. Um, almost never do I praise the non-threaded body early starters, but honestly, if you're doing a starter and you have the intake off, they're way easier to deal with because then you can just get a wrench on the back side of the nut and then use a socket on, or sorry, use a box wrench on the bolt head and then you can use a socket on the nut. So a lot easier to deal with. Uh, first order of business, it's gonna be those two bolts um, because I'm not gonna disconnect the battery for this. After that, there's a 13, a 10, and an eight. The 13's the main battery feed, the 10's the trigger from the C101, and the eight's the unloader to the C101. There's the M50, there's the M40. They sure don't look any different, but I'm guessing since it wasn't meshing, we got some work to do. Um, now there is actually a provision on the block for this, sorry, <laughs> there is actually a provision on the engine block for this hole, uh, but it kind of gets in the way of putting the starter in with all the engine harness. So I'm gonna take this bracket off, uh, which is just there for additional support. Then I'm also going to either remove or cut off this pin because there is one on the transmission and uh, that, that ain't gonna work. Actually, I'm gonna have to pull it out because there is one on the transmission. So I'll get that in a vise, smack on it a couple times, hopefully that comes out. And then time to slap it right on in. I left the bolts there, so as long as they don't fall back through, should be okay. Also, I was noticing that the fuel line here is pretty much kinked, so I got my vice grip probably bend that hard line down just a little bit so we don't run into fueling problems. So there is the M50 starter. Ta da! Still have to bend back that fuel line a little bit. Then I'm going to put the intake manifold back on and then uh, probably start to mess with the wiring up here. Well, the problems are definitely not all solved, but the new starter at least. Just priming it a little bit to get some oil in there since it's been so long. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out, idle control valve is not buzzing, the DME is getting power. Um, I've just got wires plugged straight into the C101 at this point, so. Going through and reading some online diagrams, I've done this swap a few times before, but it's been a little while, so a refresher course is needed, and this is a low-spec European car, so the wiring is a little bit different than the American stuff I'm used to. 
pardon, but uh, still making progress. Well, it seems like I have good power and ground going into the ECU everywhere, and I did some research. Even though the computer can talk to the Miller Warchip inside the ECU, um, the ECU doesn't actually need power for that. So I'm going to try to find a pin out here and uh, check all the pins that should have power and ground uh, for power and ground. And then if that's okay, I may have to get a different DME. Well, unfortunately, uh, spaghetti coder and planet whatever wiring diagrams are both requiring odd versions of Java or completely taken off the internet and everyone on forums when you ask this question just tells you to buy a Bentley. Um, I don't even have internet access out here today so I can't read my Bentley manual for a pinout. So unfortunately that is all for right now. Um, I'll probably try to bring a spare ECU with me next time just in case. Um, there's a DME problem, but I can't check it for power, so kind of a problem. Just before the new year, I brought a Virgin 413 red label computer out here to see if my fuel pump not priming was due to the ECU. Uh, it is not. So I do have a voltage or a ground issue going from the main engine harness to the computer. Um, at least that's my best guess at this point. Um, the harness is a little bit hacked up, but really it isn't too bad. Uh, I'm guessing something just got accidentally clipped. So I still am digging through my E36 Bentley manual trying to find the uh, the pinout for the ECU plug. Uh, at that point, I'm just gonna manually sort of ground everything and give everything power that needs to have power. And then hopefully we'll get fuel pump priming. And uh, once that's primed, honestly, this thing should start and run, so. Whew. It's always the last little bit of every part of the project that takes forever, and this car is no exception, so stay tuned. Well, I've been fruitlessly, although fruitfully, I suppose, figuring some stuff out here. I have ground where I need ground. I have power where I need power on the ECU. Uh, I figured out the ignition switch key wasn't working because some immobilizer box this car used to have is wired directly into the starter. So it, uh, it cranks now, which is good from the key, but I'm still not getting um, the injectors to fire, and I'm still not getting ignition coils to, to trigger. I've got good power and ground at all six ignition coils. I've got good power at the fuel injectors, so at this point I'm thinking that it might honestly be the crankshaft position sensor, which is kind of strange because this engine had a brand new one just a couple thousand miles ago. If I were smart, I would change that out just to eliminate that variable right now. Um, but I can't find a straight answer on whether or not these computers prime the fuel pump when you turn the ignition key on or not. I know the E30s don't. They only turn the fuel pump on when it sees cranking. But for some reason, I was under the impression that these mid-90s computers uh, would prime when you just had the ignition key turned. So. Um, since there's no coolant in it, I probably will change out the crank sensor because I have one right there for the Hoonicorn, which I need to bring home because that also took a dump on that car. Kind of odd that I have two cars that are almost identical and they're having basically the same issue. Um, so I'll probably do that right now just so I can eliminate that variable. Other than that, still haven't heard it fire up yet. So I have the replacement used sensor just sort of sitting in there. <clears throat> we'll see, I don't know. No dice. 
Well, here I am on the other side of the cities with the Hunicorn. And there is the new used crankshaft position sensor and the one not installed is the old one. I just popped it in and I'm just gonna double check it's connected over there. Um, and then I'm gonna try to fire it up. Hopefully that was the problem. So here we are by the alternator on the passenger side, sorry, driver's side of the car. And you can see down right at the tip of my finger there, sorry, it's blurring, there's a little open U channel. That's where the sensor is normally plugged in. All I did was sort of pull it out of the way and uh, moved it up so I could just plug this thing in. Again, this car only has to run for another 600 miles or something, so I'm not gonna take the time to remove stuff and uh, route it the correct way. There's the new one. There's the used one. Uh, this car has 230,000 miles on it. Uh, it looks like this sensor had never been out, which is kind of astounding if true. Generally, these last pretty long, but uh, I'd say 160,000 miles is probably more typical. So um, I really hope that was it. I wasn't getting fuel pump. I wasn't getting ignition. Um, when I jumpered the fuel pump relay, the car fired right up. So that kind of leads me to believe that since we weren't getting ignition or fuel, the computer wasn't seeing the engine crank. So. Job done.